Hello everyone, it's Anna here and welcome finally to a new tutorial. Today I will be making the cutest chandelier. But first, I want to say a huge, huge thank you to everyone who watched and liked and commented on my last video. It means the world to me that I have all of you who are so supportive and so understanding. It, I just, I appreciate it so much. So thank you again for all of that support. I am definitely out of my creative rut. It's like lunchtime right now and all I can think about is this chandelier and you know the measurements and the colors and I've been sketching for the last couple hours figuring it all out so I'm so ready to get into this again. One quick thing before we get started with the tutorial I have decided that I want to try Patreon. For those of you that have never heard of this Patreon is a platform where you or patrons can support your favorite artist, your favorite creator. Now every creator takes a different approach to what they offer through Patreon. What I really want to do is start building this great community. YouTube has already shown me that there is so many interesting people out there that have the same hobbies that I do or similar ones. And through Patreon, I thought that we could get more together and it wouldn't be just me talking to a camera in a room alone, but we could actually interact a lot more, you know, lively, have discussions, maybe have some calls together as well, things like that. So if this piqued your interest, then down in the description, you will find a link to Patreon in general, but also I want to launch the page on May 27th, which is my birthday. I thought that was a good day for it. So if it is after May 27th, you will also find the actual link to my Patreon down in the description. In the coming few weeks, I will be sharing some more details, but please feel free to share your thoughts and comments down below. I'll be very happy to check them out. And now let's finally start with that tutorial. Let's run through the list of supplies and tools, starting with, since this is a chandelier, you're definitely going to need a ring. So I've got this one, this is 40 centimeters in diameter, and I am keeping it this time in this white color. You know, previously I would spray paint this, usually like a bronze or metal or something, but because of the cord colors that I'm using, I think the white is going to be the best for it. So talking about the cords, I have been lucky enough that Bobby Nee have again offered to do a sponsored video with me and they have sent me their cords from their newest spring collection. And it is, it is these three lovely spring colors. All of the cords are braided cords in five millimeters. I've got Iris, which is this lovely blue one. Then there is milky green, so that's obviously the green color. And then the last one is called pastel pink. I think that they make such a nice trio together. I cannot wait to see how the pattern is going to look like with those three. All the measurements for the cords you can always find in the description of my video. So check that out if you want to really follow along at this exact pattern and tutorial. Other than the cords, I think I will want to use beads at the very ends. Like instead of doing tassels, I might want to just attach some beads, but I'll see. I do have a nice selection of them at this point as well. So I might also end up using like a couple of different you know, shapes and sizes and whatever. So, but we'll see at the very end. That is it for the supplies. Now for the tools, you of course are going to need your scissors and your meter for measuring and cutting all the cords. That's the essential. And then I think I will want to or need to use my hot glue gun again at the very end. But again, plans change, so that may not be the case in the end, but I have it handy always anyways. And then because this is a chandelier, again, you have that slight um, problem or maybe the complication of how do you actually work on this. Now my method is using a tie rack which 
You will see in just a minute as I will start putting the cords on. I think you could also just get more creative and figure out something else, but this is really the best way that has um, worked for me. So I do need a tire rack for this project as well. And that is covering all of our supplies and tools. So let's get started. I will cut all of the cords that I'm gonna be hanging on the ring and then put it all the, on the ring. And at that point, I will start explaining how I'm going to make the pattern. colorful cords I've got six different sections two of each color and each section has 15 cords so that means on the entire ring I've got 90 cords I was using just the regular Lark's head knot and don't be surprised when you look at the measurements the cords really are just one meter long and that's because none of these cords are going to be doing any knots so I literally just need the length of the final chandelier and that's it. So that's why these ones are really quite short. But of course there will be some knots. <laughs> I'm planning to make a similar pattern like with that chandelier up there. It's just that on this one I want to use the vertical double half hitch knot. So I want to make similar like arrow shapes using the vertical double half hitch knot and so for that i will need some more cords and i'll be using always like the same color of the cord as are these original ones so let's start in this pink section so on the very left i'm going to take the first two cords of the pink color and to do the vertical double half hitch knot i'm getting an extra cord of that same color i'll put it behind the two cords and then make a loop around it, making sure I'm holding it tight so it stays like that with just a little bit sticking out on the left. And then I will make another loop like this, hold it down with my thumb, and I'll pull the rest of the cord through that loop I just made and tighten, holding on both sides. And that is it. We've got the vertical double half hitch knot. And now I'm going to repeat this vertical double half hitch knot the entire row, the entire pink section, the entire first row. So to make the second one, I will go first, kind of pull it behind the next two cords, make that loop, hold it down, pull it through, kind of wrap it around, pull it through, tighten, and then do the second one same way and tighten and you will see that once I tighten what I do is like this little movement that's just to make sure that the two cords are hanging down straight that they're both kind of facing forward because what happens you can see that even as I make just the first one because I'm pulling this through here the cords get a little bit twisted to the side so to make sure that they keep straight I will straighten them like that after I finish each loop, I guess. Now there is a trick for the vertical double half hitch knot, just like for the horizontal one. I've made a whole separate video 
teaching you how to do exactly what I'm doing now. So if you haven't seen that, you can check that out up there. But basically, you it's, it's almost the same. You make two loops out of the long chord and you pull the two chords, which are much shorter, through that and then you tighten it. It's not saving as much time as the one for the horizontal double half hitch knot, but still, it is a great time saver, so I do like to use it as well. Once I'm done with the entire first row, I want to start the second one, but I want to start making that arrow shape. So I need to leave this one, th these two chords out, and the next row will start on the second set of chords. So I'll take again the same extra chord that I was using before. There should be enough for the entire arrow. And I'm going to go first behind these two chords, then make a loop, the first one, and then we make the loop here on the left and go through it for the second loop. Now, don't worry, obviously, you can see this one is very short, but in the description, I'm putting like the full you know, chord length for the entire first arrow. And so like this, we continue going the other way. And so once you will come to the other side, you will again only finish on this one. This, these two should be left out. This is going to be the last one, and then we will continue again like this until we get to a point where there is literally just one, you know, the middle chord only has the double half hitch knot. initial triangles you can see I've done all of the colors the exact same way I did the first one and I have to say I can definitely tell that I had a break from macrame or rather my hands and my back can tell because they are pretty sore from all of this but that's okay I'm sure I'll catch up to my previous shape in no time okay to move on here, we are going to start mixing these colors together. So what I want to do is add berry knots kind of at the bottom of all these triangles, but I want to add berry knots from a different color than what this is. I think I will just, you know, I'll decide, probably do like pink here, then here it's gonna have the blue one, then here the green one, you know, the one that's on the left from you know, this triangle. So let me show you how I'm going to do that. For each berry knot, you're going to need two additional cords. This one on the top is the longer one. This one on the bottom is the shorter. Again, all measurements in the description. And so what I'm going to do is put the two cords behind the two that are in the middle, the pink ones. And then I will be working only with the green. And the green is going to make, the longer chords are going to make three square knots, just like you would need to make if you're making a regular berry knot. Now you want to keep a tiny little hole here so that we can then pull the chords through it once we are done with the three square knots. Now I'm going to take the two quarts in the middle and I'll pull them through that tiny loop we left in the middle at the top. So like this and then pull them a little bit more until this creates that berry knot. Now pull that berry knot to the top here so that it's in the right place. Now to finish it off, I need to make one more square knot underneath here, but to have a nice clean 
look, I want to make it behind these two pink cords. So what I'm going to do is pull them up like that and then make the square knot right here. Okay, I can pull these down and then later I'm going to use my hot glue gun to attach all of these extra pieces to the back. And now I'll make all of these on all of these. All the berry knots are up. I do think this is just so cute. <laughs> and now it is time for round two of all these vertical double half hitches. So what I want to do now is do a reverse thing so do the triangle in this shape now I think that will be a little bit more tricky than the first time I was doing this because I will be expanding but I have to make sure that everything is in line and it's in the right place so let me show you maybe a couple of the first ones that I'm going to do and then yeah you know, I'll just finish all the rest so I'm going to take a new piece of cord and with these two cords in the middle, I will start the exact same way like I started at the very top. So first, one loop like that with a little thing to the side. And then I can make this loop and pull these cords through it to make my job easier with that second loop. Like this, we've got our first one. For the second row, we need three of those vertical double half hitch knots. So I'm going to take it to this side. And so I'm going to make these cords or these loops, pull the two through. And then, and this is the tricky part, because it needs to be in the second row i can't pull it all the way because then it would be same as this first one but we needed one row below that so i need to make sure that i'm not making it too tight so like that maybe and then i can make the other one which will be easier because that one is going right next to this one now I can go back, see if this is really leveled with it. Maybe it can be a little bit more further up. Okay, and now a third one. And again, just need to make sure that I'm making it at the right height. So like that. But it is relatively easy to pull, once you make the double half hitch, to pull it either up or down on the cords. So it's not too bad. Okay, and so like this, I'll keep expanding one more set of cords with each row until I reach the full length across. <sighs> this is hard. <laughs> I hope it looks okay. I mean, it does to me when I look at it in the camera as well. So it seems like I did a good job, but it really takes a lot of precision and focus when you're adding those additional lines to make sure that everything is straight, that the, the gaps are not too big. I had to keep like looking back at it, making sure it's not like tilting this way or that way. So I think this, makes this whole project one that is for advanced makers. I mean, of course you can try if you want to, but be prepared that this is going to take quite some effort. So now I will keep adding this for all the other cords um, or all the other colors, and then let's see what I'm gonna do next.
vertical double half hitch knots. And I was sitting here really wondering how do I move forward because I did want to somehow figure out how do I connect these two sides together. And I did a few, you know, just a few different tries. And I think what I landed with is this. So just a little pattern of the regular double half hitch knot. So let me show you on the next section over here how exactly I did that. So I'm starting with the blue section, the one on the left, and I'm taking the fourth chord from the beginning, from the end of that section. So the fourth chord and then the three blue chords are gonna go onto that one, making the double half hitch knot. So theoretically, I guess, I am making some knots with those initial chords as well, but it's just a few on the sides here. And then same thing from the other side, from the green section. So again, taking the fourth chord from the beginning of that section, and we're going to put the three on it and this blue one that was the travel chord before as well. And I feel like with this connection in place, it just looks a lot more cohesive like it's a pattern together and not just you know separate pieces of color so i'll keep going like this always starting with the section on the left and then finishing with the other side okay so all the colored sections are connected and now for the next few steps and kind of the finishing touches i have to say I'm not 100% certain if what I have in my mind is going to work, but I guess I just have to try and see. So what I'm thinking is I will add one more berry knot of that same color, always in the middle of that colored section here. And then down here on those two same chords, on both of them, I am going to add the beads. So I'll have to figure out, you know, what kind of a, um, selection of beads I'm going to put on and then I'll sort of trim the all of the cords in here to that arrow shape and let's see you know if I change my mind throughout you will yeah I, I will make sure to let you know <laughs> you will notice anyways um so let's see how all of that goes done putting up the beads at first I did try to put them on the middle cords but that looked way too much like certain genitals and <laughs> that's definitely not the look that I'm going for so instead I kind of separated them equally around the whole chandelier because I did like you know this sort of combination of the three different ones and now I'm also rethinking, you know, that means I won't be cutting it like this into the arrow. Probably what I will do is just a, a straight trim down at the bottom. And what I also need to do is clean up all of the little bits, like all of the extra pieces that we were using for the vertical double half hitch knots and also all of the remaining cords from the berry knots that we were adding. And so I will do that with my glue gun. I'm not sure how much of that I will be able to film because 
it is already pretty hard to get with the glue gun inside of the chandelier to you know glue those together um so i'm not sure you know if if i will be able to get those shots <music> chandelier is finished and I still think it is the cutest thing ever I think this would go so well into like a nursery or maybe even a kid's bedroom let me know what you think down in the comments below you've probably noticed I ended up changing the trim at the bottom a little bit before it was straight and I decided to make it into a little bit of an um like a wave if you know, if that's the right word. And I have to tell you, that was such a nerve wracking decision. I was standing here for a good five minutes staring at that straight fringe. And I knew that I just wasn't happy with it 100%. But also at the same time, I didn't know if cutting it this way would make it any better. It could have made it worse as well, but I just felt like the beads were kind of lost in the rest of the fringe. So I felt like I needed to make a little space for them so that they can stand out a little bit more. That's also something you can let me know down in the comments. You've seen the straight fringe, so you can compare it to this one and let me know which option is your favorite. And that is it for today. I hope you had fun watching the video and especially if you're going to recreate the piece, I hope you will have fun then. Check out the Patreon link down in the description below and I look forward to my next project. Bye everyone.